Go ahead. Thanks, Jen. Uh, Secretary Blinken just said, and Jake Sullivan said the other day, that even after August 31st, that the U.S. government is committed to helping Americans and Afghans who are still in the country mm -hmm. eligible to get out, to get out safely. How do you do that if the military is gone? How do you safeguard these people and get them where they need to go without the U.S. military in the country? Well, uh, I know, uh, Nancy, as you, as you mentioned, that the Secretary was asked that. He didn't go into detail for a reason, because we are currently having those discussions through diplomatic channels. Uh, but what he assured, I think, the public of, and I can reiterate from here, is that we are looking at a range of options for how we can continue to provide consular support, facilitate departures for those who wish to leave after uh, August 31st. And our expectation and the expectation of the international community is that people who want to leave Afghanistan after the U.S. military depart should be able to do so. Uh, we're, we're working on that. As soon as we have more to, pro to provide to all of you and more information, we will do exactly that. And then based on the numbers that you've provided of uh, yeah. Americans who have been evacuated, it sounds like there are at least 70,000 Afghans who have been evacuated. How do you possibly vet all of those people in a timely fashion uh, when, you know, clearly the um, Customs and Border Patrol and, and the relevant officials must be completely overloaded? Uh, they are. Uh, and I will say this is a reflection of uh, the fact that we have uh, hundreds of uh, employees of our intelligence community working 24 hours a day to uh, do uh, the vetting necessary and uh, reviews necessary uh, to move people uh, into the United States. Now, I would remind you that uh, there are a number of people, tens of thousands of people who are departing Afghanistan who are going to uh, third countries, lily pads as we've been calling them, and where additional vetting can take place, either because they've only proceeded through certain steps of, this, of the immigrant visa uh, process or because their vetting process has not yet been completed. I can give you a little bit more detail, too, on the vetting process if that, help, if that is helpful. Um, so the screening and security vetting is conducted by a combination of the intelligence, law enforcement, and counterterrorism professionals from across government. So the Department of Homeland Security, Department of Defense, the FBI, the State Department, the NCTC, the National Counterterrorism Center, and additional intelligence community partners. Um, what they are doing are they're conducting screening and security vetting for all SIV applicants and other vulnerable a Afghans before they are allowed into the United States. This includes reviews of both biographic and biometric data. And if an individual is not through that vetting process, they're not coming into the United States. And are there any estimates for how long it'll take to work through that backlog? Could these people be going through the system for months or years? You mean people who are in third countries? Well, what I will tell you is that it typically takes months to go through this process, and what, what this is a, a signal of is, is the fact that this is a top priority for the President and the intelligence community and the individuals who oversee this vetting process who have massively expedited the process in order to move through the necessary steps, uh, if the, thorough steps, in order to process individuals and get them uh, moving through the system.